In today's video, we'll be discussing a really important topic, which is mental health in the workplace. To do this, it's a good idea to paint a picture regarding this topic so that everyone understands how prominent of an issue this is. Firstly, employees are increasingly telling no one about their mental health issues, a number that is up 3% from last year at 30%. Secondly, men are 9% more likely to keep work-related mental health problems to themselves at 35% compared to 26% of women. The number of employees who feel that organisation supports their mental health is on the rise, up 8% from last year, with 63% reporting this. Penultimately, more employees feel comfortable talking about stress in the workplace than they do about mental health. And finally, 41% of employees have experienced mental health symptoms caused or worsened by work in 2020, whilst only 12.4% of sick days were taken for mental health conditions even though one in four people will experience a mental health problem of some kind each year in England. During the pandemic, almost one in five adults at 19.2% were likely to be experiencing some form of depression during the coronavirus pandemic in June 2020. This had almost doubled from around one in 10 before the pandemic. A lot of confusion surrounds the laws regarding mental health in the workplace, mainly due to many businesses not having a policy or lack of understanding surrounding illness relating to mental health problems. ACAS, who are the Advisory, Conciliation and Arbitration Service, give employees and employers free, impartial advice on workplace rights, rules and best practice and offer training and help to resolve disputes. To summarise, they say that mental illness becomes a disability when it has a substantial adverse effect on the life of an employee. For example, they cannot regularly focus on a task or it takes them longer to do. It lasts at least 12 months or is expected to. It affects their ability to do their normal day-to-day -day activities. For example, interacting with people, following instructions or keeping to set working times. A mental health issue can be considered a disability even if they're not symptoms all the time or the symptoms are better at sometimes at others. If this is the case, all the usual rules regarding disability apply and the employer must cater to the employee and make reasonable adjustments. So how do you spot the signs of mental health issues? Hopefully you are aware that there are over 200 classified forms of mental disorders ranging from learning difficulties like Asperger's syndrome to eating disorders such as bulimia to mental disorders like schizophrenia. Every illness has different symptoms and should be approached differently with great sensitivity. The two most common mental disorders in Britain, generalized anxiety disorder and clinical depression are categorized in detail by the NHS, which we give in our blog equivalent of this video which I'll link in the description box below. Any of these issues could affect work in a number of ways. For example, lower productivity, lack of concentration, paranoia around feedback and workload. All of these factors lower work quality, productivity, and overall morale of an employee, leading to a plethora of negative impacts for everyone involved. Tips for employees. Look after yourself. There are many contributing factors towards mental health. What you eat, whether or not you're active, your genes, life experiences, upbringing, environment, all affect our mental health that influences how we think and respond to situations. It's really important and powerful to recognize you need help and to reach out accordingly. Minimize the stigma. The historical stigma surrounding mental illness is drastically changing and rightfully so. Part of changing your attitude is getting clued up on how mental health can be visible or invisible and how to approach each case sensitively. Not just as an employee, but as a person, you have a responsibility to strive to minimize the negative stigma around mental health and mental illness. Look out for your colleagues. If you're aware of what signs to look out for, 
you can potentially apply these to your colleagues and spot the signs before it escalates and try to support them and their mental health. In a recent documentary by the BBC and radio host and television personality Roman Kemp titled Our Silent Emergency explores how we as individuals can support others and look out for their mental health. One of the tips provided when asking someone how they are, the response is usually good and you? Or when asking someone if they're okay, the same response, yes and you? By asking a second time, are you really okay? This shows the other person that you really care and willing to listen to any issues they may have. It's a great watch. We definitely recommend you have a look. The link to that will be in the description box below as well. Tips for employers. Minimize the stigma. Think about your company culture and attitude towards mental health. How do you react when an employee reached out for help tells you they need time off because of mental health issues? How do you welcome an employee back when they're off due to a mental health illness? Get educated. There are many free online resources regarding mental health. What it is, how it can be managed and how it can be spoken about more openly. Managers have a duty of care for their employees to look after and act in the best interests of their workers. Create a mentally healthy workplace. On screen is an image of some of the most searched terms relating to mental health in the workplace. The image on screen demonstrates people's work related worries when dealing with mental health issues. A further burden to people already dealing with a tough time. It is important to cultivate a culture in which your staff feel safe to disclose any problems that they may have and be open about how you can collaboratively work through the issues with them, supporting them throughout. Where to get help. If you think you do need help, it can often be difficult not only to decide what help you need, but also how urgently you need it. For some, therapy or counselling can be a perfect fit, whereas in other cases, unfortunately, more urgent care is needed. The NHS have a helpful chart which helps you decide the seriousness of your issue. If you're affected by the topics covered in this video, the NHS provides useful information on symptoms of depression and support available. Every Mind Matters also provide helpful advice on looking after your mental health during the coronavirus pandemic. Thank you for watching and please remember, mental health is more common than you think. 30%, that's three in 10, nearly about one in three. So do remember that. If you're in an office, just look around, you know, that might be someone there. And so you may or may not know about it. So make sure you check in on all your colleagues because even the ones who show the most strength can sometimes be suffering on the inside. So please do reach out to everyone, but also especially for those working from home in that isolated environment over telephone or over Zoom or Teams, it can be much easier for them to hide away from the issue and not be showing those symptoms so do check in with them, show you're available to listen. If you're close by, encourage to meet up and go for a drink or a coffee or a bite to eat or if you share a hobby, do something together. But do make sure you check in on each other because like I said, anyone could suffer from this and at any point in their life. And so you may be thankful to reach out to someone because they may be willing to do the same to you in due course. As I said, we're not experts on mental health. Um, we're always happy to listen, but I would encourage you to speak to uh, professionals because they'll be in a much better place to help guide you through things.